Hi guys, this is Sarah here. Today I'm going to be talking about a feature that we've actually had for quite a while in Letta called Tool Rules. Um, it's basically kind of a way to constrain the behavior of your agents, but we've recently added a lot more support for Tool Rules in the ADE, so that's what I'm going to be walking you guys through today. So to get started, I can show you just what a basic agent looks like in Letta and what Tool Rules it comes with by default. So if I just create an agent here, And if I go to Tool Manager, I can also already see the rules that this agent is created with. Um, so you can see that this agent has a set of tools. Um, so, you know, some basic tools for conversation search, editing its um, core memory blocks, and also sending a message. Um, but if I go to the rules over here, I can actually see this visualization. Um, so th this agent by default comes with um, a couple different tool rules. So one is the exit loop. So basically, you know, if the agent calls send message, then it needs to exit. And then the other one is basically um, the continue loop tool rule. So what this basically means is that if the agent calls a tool like conversation search, um, core memory replace, uh, or core memory append, um, none of these tools can result in an actual exit. It has to go back to the agent. Um, so this is kind of like a way to ha add some constraints to the agent's behavior so that we don't get things like, you know, the agent immediately returning without sending us back a message. Um, and then, yeah, we also have this idea of like, you know, the start node here. Um, and so this, what this basically means is that when the agent is invoked, um, it'll be kind of totally um, autonomous and get to decide what, what to do next. But I can, of course, add more constraints. So um, a really simple example of a constraint is maybe before I do anything or before the agent does anything, I always want it to search the conversation first. Um, I don't think you would actually want to add this tool, um, but just for demo's sake, I'm going to add one. Um, so you can see here that now this start node actually points to conversation search. So when this agent is first invoked, it's always going to call conversation search first. Um, and then after it's done that, then it kind of goes to this node and can do whatever it wants. So, I mean, this isn't going to be very interesting, but just for demo's sake, I can kind of show you guys. If I now message hi, it's always going to search um, the conversation and respond back to me. And so you can see here, obviously, it didn't get any results because this is a brand new agent. Um, but this is kind of, you know, if you're implementing something like a RAG agent, um, you can do that in here. So to give you guys a little bit more context, by default, Letta agents are basically fully autonomous. So what this means is that... You know, if you have this agent, um, this is kind of like the more classical definition of an agent, um, but you have an agent and then you also have environment. And so what's basically happening in general with, with agents, if they're autonomous or, uh, you know, agents in the traditional sense of the word, is that this agent can basically take actions. Um, so actions, I, I think in LLM land, these are basically called tools. So this is things like MCP custom tools, in Letta's case, like basically like system or base tools. Um, and so these are kind of like the set of actions that the agent can take uh, in order to kind of change, change things in the environment or take actions in its environment. And so once this happens, um, you know, there's basically updates that get made to the environment. So these kind of correspond to uh, actual state updates. And maybe someday we'll also have rewards here. Um, but in, in most agents, I think today, uh, basically, there's just state updates. And so here, like, this is a fully autonomous agent, right? So we're not saying anything about, like, you know, what is actually, what what tools can it call, um, you know, must it call in sequence or what are kind of constraints on the tool calling? It's always fully autonomous. So the agent can decide at any point in time, you know, which of the available set of tools it's going to be using. But I think a lot of the time it's actually quite useful to be able to add constraints on the behavior of the agent. So obviously, if models were perfect, we could do this all through prompting just by writing the instructions to the agent. The agent would figure out the right combination of tools to call. Um, but I, I think in reality, it can be a little difficult to get this to be 100 percent reliable, which is pretty important for production applications. Um, so, yeah, to kind of give you guys an example, like one one thing you might want to do is like adding constraints to like a research agent. Um, so, you know, a research agent, you might want to do like a web search and then you might want to follow that by um, evaluate, like evaluating, you know, how, if you've searched everything that you need to. Um, and then as a final step, 
maybe generate a report. And so if you have a research agent that you give like these three tools to, you ideally kind of want it to first search the web, evaluate. Um, you might want to kind of repeat this step a couple of different times, but you might also want to repeat like how many times you want this step to happen. Um, so maybe you want this to happen like, you know, repeat up to three times. Oh, that looks like a, a heart. So let's do up to two. Um, and then finally, once it's done, then you generate a report. So this is kind of like an example of um, a sort of more explicit workflow that we might want to define that, you know, for a perfect model, it might, without us doing anything, it might actually figure out how to do all these things just through prompting. Um, but I think what we've often seen with the state of models right now is that you do actually kind of have to add a little bit of constraints at the framework layer to um, get this to reliably work 100% of the time. So this is roughly the workflow that we want to implement. Um, I'm actually just going to implement this purely as a, a workflow and kind of strip out some of the memory features of Letta just to make this really, really simple. So I'm going to hop over to the ADE. You can also do this from the SDK, um, but just to be able to kind of visually show you guys what this looks like, I'm going to do this in the ADE. So I'm going to create an agent from scratch. And actually, before I even do anything, I'm just going to remove everything, um, even the send message tool. We can also um, set a flag called reset message buffer in Letta. So what this means is that basically um, the conversation won't be persisted in context. So this agent is basically broken since it has no tools. So let's now add back some of those tools that we had in that diagram. So one is just a really simple search tool. I also already made like a eval tool. Um, so evaluate research status. So this is just a really simple dummy tool to kind of evaluate whether the research has been completed or not. Um, and so it just kind of prompts the model to pass in true or false. So I can attach this. And this is also just a tool. I, I think, you, you know, if you're doing this for real, you'd want to format these results a lot nicer. Um, but this is just kind of a way for the model to, or the LLM to report um, some results, which is just going to be a list of strings. So I'll also attach this. So now our agent has three different tools. And so we can kind of look at this inside of the rules builder. So to understand what this means, um, this start basically means um, what happens on an agent invocation. So basically when the agent is first invoked, we can specify a specific tool that should be, should be called, or we can say that it's up to the agent. So in this case, there's no rules, so it's up to the agent. So it just go to, goes to the agent. And then um, basically at each step or each iteration of the inner, the agent loop, um, the agent can decide to call any of the tools. So it can call web search, it can call report research results, it can call evaluate research status. It's all up to the agent. Hopefully the agent will make the right choices, um, but it's not guaranteed. And after it calls any of these tools, it can either exit or it can basically repeat the loop. So let's actually see what happens if we just don't add any rules whatsoever. Um, so at, at this point, I've added zero prompting, um, zero, yeah, absolutely nothing. So let's kind of just see what happens. So I can ask my favorite question, why is PG vector not officially part of Postgres? So it successfully called the web search tool, which is great. And it was not perfect. I, I mean, again, we've added zero prompting, so it's not really that surprising um, that this isn't working. Um, but yeah, now it's also stuck in the loop. So let's actually just stop that. Um, yeah, this is basically not really the behavior that we want. We actually probably could solve this with prompting um, by just telling the agent, like, you know, you should call this tool, then this tool. And like, this is kind of how you should be using the tools. At this point, we've added none of that. So it's not surprising that the agent's kind of just, you know, doing random things. Um, but yeah, instead of doing this with prompting, which is what I would normally recommend for the sake of this demo, let's actually enforce these constraints through tool rules. Um, so so I, I do really want to emphasize that with tool rules, uh, these should kind of be like a last resort. Like the way we recommend programming your agents is by programming the context window. So you should actually add prompting um, to get the behavior that you want. And tool rules are really just like a mechanism to guarantee that you're getting the behavior that you want. But I think you want to try to get where you want to be with prompting. And if that's really not working, your agents just being like annoying or getting things wrong, um, then you should add tool rules. 
so I guess let's to start just add the start constraint. So every time we interact with this agent, we always want it to call web search. So we'll add this. So now the start constraint actually points to the web search tool. And we can also see this little icon, like the run first icon um, has been added to the web search node. And then after we call web search, we actually always want it to follow up with um, evaluating the research status. So we can also save this. And so now you can see with web search, it actually doesn't point back to the agent. It points to evaluate research status. So what this means is that basically it's not like an agentic decision to decide what tool to call after calling web search. Um, it's basically purely deterministic and we force um, evaluate research status to get called. And then we also want it to be so that if we evaluate the research status, it gets followed up with either calling web search or reporting research results. So basically, if we're done researching, um, then it should just report the results. If we're not done, then it should um, continue to search. So you can also see this constraint um, in here. So either, oops. Yeah, so basically after um, evaluate research status is called, it has to either call report research results or call web search. And finally, I'm also gonna make it so that um, we have a exit loop constraint. So basically if we call, or the agent calls report research results, then it has to exit the loop. And so now if I look here, yeah, so if you call, if the agent calls report research results, then it has to exit versus um, web search and evaluate research status, both have to go to other tools and so are not able to exit. So now we have something that looks a lot more kind of like a graph rather than a purely an agent. So I can go back to the agent and Basically, I, I guess I can ask the same, uh, different question this time. Um, who were the founders of OpenAI? And so it called web search. So it did that properly last time too, but now it's kind of 100% guaranteed that it's going to do it because we have that tool rule. And yes, this time it correctly called evaluate research status. Um, so it decided that it is complete, you know, done with the researching. And so then it calls report research results. And so this is just kind of the report. You can format it more nicely if you have a real application. And then the agent terminates because we have that exit, um, exit tool rule. So yeah, again, I want to reiterate that I think tool rules are kind of a last resort. Um, because models aren't perfect, it means that it's also difficult to um, get exactly the behavior that you want out of your agents all the time. Also, if you're defining things that are maybe closer to more deterministic workflows, um, this can be really useful to kind of make that behavior more predictable as opposed to having purely agentic agents. Another thing I want to note is that um, this all works a lot better if you're using OpenAI models because uh, Anthropic currently does not support structured outputs. Um, so we do have some hacks to kind of get around that to um, enforce reliable tool calling, but it is a lot easier if you're using OpenAI. So yeah, thanks again for watching um, and excited to see what you guys build.